for those of you right now who have turned your attention to your lab write-ups rather than to the homework, this is not third period. Grab your homework and uh, let's get your questions answered. And then guys, today we're going to move into an idea that we've been sort of utilizing in other settings. You'll see it in question number 61 in the homework today. It's called Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures. Um, we're going to come at this from a couple different angles, um, but we need to sort of put the previous stuff to rest first. So guys, what questions do you have about the homework? You really okay? Go ahead, Ronnie. Yeah, let's do that last, if that's okay. Let's see if there's anything prior to that, and then we can look at question 61. Guys, other questions on the homework? You really okay? Yeah? I don't know. Do I have question marks? A 19B? Let's look. I don't know. Did I put true in question mark? On B? Oh. Now I'm curious. I don't know. Apparently we figured it out. So guys, question number 19. Um, I, so really my answer just has question. Oh, uh, so yeah, I, I think the reason that I put question marks for B is simply because we haven't got, for those of you that have done physics, we haven't got into this whole forces mass times acceleration thing. Um, but we can still talk about it. So 19B says at equilibrium, the force of gravity per unit area acting on the mercury column equals the force of gravity per unit area acting on the atmosphere. And that's true. That's the whole idea that they're in equilibrium. Um, but I think in the past I had students that were questioning this idea of force and gravity um, simply because we haven't used those specific terms in here, um, but they are in fact equal. It's at equilibrium. So I just have question marks for my answer. That's weird. Okay. What else, y'all, besides 61? You guys okay? Okay. So guys, on question number 61, um, question number 61 is basically talking about a situation where, wow, why did that happen? Where you are collecting um, a gas over water. And we've alluded to this before, but the idea is that when we collect a gas over water, in order to find the pressure of the gas, what we need to do is subtract out the pressure of the water vapor. Um, we find the pressure of the water vapor in a water in a in a uh, vapor pressure table relative to temperature. Um, and in this particular case, we know that the pressure of the atmosphere was 738 torr, and then the pressure of the water vapor from the table was that. Subtracting that gives us the pressure of the gas. Um, then we can convert that into moles using Pivnert. Um, and then notice that I had to convert that to atmosphere, so the 0.08206 worked. Um, so just divide by 760 to convert to atmospheres, and then converted that into moles, and off we went. So, yeah. Yeah, because we have a Tor constant, don't we? Guys, you're going to need your equation sheets today anyway. You may as well grab them. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So... Did you do it that way? And did it work? Perfect. Yeah. No, that's totally fine. No. Nope. Yeah. So guys, um, you did not need to use the 0 0.08206. We do have an R value. Uh, is it 62.36? I've never used that in calculations. Um, but you could use that as well. And then you don't have to convert TOR to ATM. So, Ronnie, you ask, is that a sufficient conversation about question 61? Okay. 
So guys, are we satisfied that we understand this homework assignment and we can move forward? We okay? Okay, so let's get this in the books. Um, guys, you're going to need calculators and note-taking materials and AP equation sheets. And let me put this away. Braden, were you good on this? Matt, how about you? Uh, Sophia? Ethan? Ishmael? Josh? Diana, you good? Chandler, how about you? Isaac? Ellie? Landon? Gone. Uh, Nathan? Emma, how about you? Max, you good? Leslie? Gage? Um, and Gage, we probably need to go back and make up some stuff, right? Okay, we'll talk. Ronnie. Yeah. Michaela, you good? Yeah. Spencer. Yeah. Daniel. Yeah. And Meredith. Okay. So, guys, before we dig into what we're doing today, um, I want to chat with you for just a second. No, 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 Spencer. So, that, 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 that's, that's not what we're doing. Grab a seat. We'll talk later. You can, but not now, because we're doing something different, my friend. There you go. Hey, so, guys, before we dig in, um, I want to have a, a, have a different conversation with you. Um, so AP testing, obviously, this year is different. And there are a lot of unknowns. And there are a lot of changes. Um, never before have you not been asked to put money on the line this late into the year relative to your tests. Um, also, you may or may not know that all of you are signed up for all of your tests. We talked about that, right? That, that Mr. Grossbeck, our AP coordinator, just hit a universal register everybody button. Um, and so if you're in an AP class, you are registered for that AP test. The difference is that the AP people are now floating the testing fees. It used to be that we would buy tests for everybody that wanted them. We were we're sticking money on the line, and then if you didn't eventually want your test, we got a refund. Well, guys, now what's going on is the AP people are floating the difference until we find out, so we're not going to be paying for your tests until after you take them. So, guys, that's the little bit that I know about AP testing right now, but I am going to a school-wide meeting uh, today at one o'clock to try to learn more which is why I'm coming to you. Um, guys, what questions do you have? Let me grab pencil and paper so I can write these down. What questions, and guys understand that we don't have answers to all the questions, but what questions do you have that I could take to this group to try to get answers to? About AP tests. Yeah. Yeah, so format, um, in person, in school. My understanding is that they are going to be in school. Um, and then, um, yeah, I'm curious to know if they're going to be full length. Guys, what else? Yeah. Yeah, and so it's interesting. Um, I've all, I, I need to be careful what I say, but there's already conversations about that where, and I'll get more information, but they're talking about letting kids opt for the B form of any exam without explanation or justification. Um, that terrifies me. Um, guys, do not take the B form of the chemistry test. It's horrible. Um, but with that said, I was talking with Gil about it, and Gil was like, the B form of the statistics test is not harder than the A form. So, yeah, but for some reason, I don't know why they're talking about letting kids just, whoever wants to take the test late can. I think part of it is because they want to give people more time to study because they know that we're on a weird schedule. Um, but I'll find out more. What else, y'all? Other questions I can take to the group? Yeah. Oh, so you can't take both. 
So once you've taken a test, you're done. Um, so you, you can't do the A and then, it's not like the ACT where you can take it again. If you take the A form, you can't take the B form. So although that said, did you do AP test last year? They mucked with it, right? Like if you were sitting the test and if something weird happened, you could request a retest. That was, I, that's never been the case before last year. So, I mean, I could ask if you can, can you take both? Um, go ahead. Like, are you envisioning coming to school and sitting down at a computer? Have you heard that? Um, so will there be an online component? So that that's completely new to me. Um, well, I don't want to comment. I'm going to comment. That would be horrible. Um, not in English, right? Because you're... You're typing anyway, but in chemistry, that would be yucky. I don't know. I'll find out. Yeah. Um, so, at, yeah, well, and maybe expanding on that, I have students, not in AP, but I have students that are home. They can't come to school. So will there be an at-home option um, regardless, like if you're quarantined, not sick, but quarantined because of contact, could you at home option for home people? Yeah, that's a good question. Guys, anything else I could get clarification on if it exists? Okay, so if things come up, um, don't interrupt the flow of class today, but if something comes to your mind, jot it down in the margins of your notes. And, uh, and bring it to me. And I will bring these questions to the, the committee while well, we're just meeting with all the AP teachers. Um, but hopefully we can get some answers to these things. So anything else right now? You guys good? Okay. So guys, what we're gonna do today is we're going to um, actually pick up, if you will, um, with question number 61. So the topic for your notes today is partial pressure and gas mixtures. Probably if you're reading these words carefully, you understand that they're associated because when you create a mixture, huh, the mixture has parts. And so guys, what we're gonna do today is we're going to talk about some of the counterintuitive things that gas mixtures do. But what you're gonna find out is we are going to approach these ideas from two different angles. Um, so grabbing your AP sheet, let me just orient you to where we're going to look. So you know where we found the R value and Pivnerd is at the very top? So guys, down below that, the next two equations are actually just retellings of the same equation. I know that it doesn't look that way at first glance, but the first one that says PA is equal to P total times X sub A, and then the next one P total is PA plus PB plus PC. Guys, those, the, the second equation is actually derived from the, the first, well, the second equation is derived from the third, actually, in the, the list, the order they're in. Um, and so, guys, what we're going to do is we're going to look at this from two different angles. But regardless, we're talking about mixtures. But, guys, it's critical that when we do this, we understand how liquids, I'm sorry, how gases behave very, very differently from other phases of matter. So guys, let's talk about this. We need to sort of break our, ourselves of some misconceptions. So guys, it goes like this. This is a 250 milliliter beaker. So what is the available volume of this beaker? Well, 250 milliliters, right? So guys, if we come along and if we add liquid A to this beaker, and if I add 100 milliliters of liquid A, what is now the available volume of this beaker? 150 milliliters. 
So guys, the idea is with liquids, and then of course also with solids, solids and liquids take up spaces in containers, which are now no longer available for other substances to occupy. Well guys, gases are completely different. So guys, let me just do this and I'll empty this one out. So if we look at a gas, and let's just grab this beaker. So guys, this is a 600 milliliter beaker. The available volume is 600 milliliters, but there's already a gas in here, right? What's the gas? Air, largely nitrogen. But then guys, if I want to add some carbon dioxide to this by breathing into it with my exhaled breath, guys, how much carbon dioxide can I put in here? Also 600 milliliters. Do you see the difference? Guys, why is it that that's the case for liquids, but not for, or for gases, but not for liquids? What is it fundamentally about gases that makes this true? Exactly, guys. And again, it all comes down to the things that make gases ideal. Come back to any time you're trying to figure out the weirdness of gases, you've always got to come back to this idea that they're weird because they're spread out. And because they're so spread out, the spaces, the volume of the molecules doesn't matter. They don't attract each other. And so guys, any time you get stuck with gases, come back to this fundamental memory that these things are super spread out. You get the idea? Okay. So guys, with that as a foundation, let's go here and let's talk about something called Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures. Let me encourage you to write this down because you do need to know the definition and it simply goes like this. Guys, Dalton's Law of Partial Pressure says this. The total pressure of a mixture of gases is equal to the sum of the pressures that each would exert if it were present alone. Again, the total pressure of a mixture of gases is equal to the sum of the pressures that they would exist, that they would exert if they were present alone. Now guys, here's the problem with this. This is simple until it gets hard. The AP authors are geniuses at making this hard. So guys, at some level, you need to understand that, that fundamentally, this doesn't make sense. When you read it, you're like, yeah, sure, no problem, this makes sense. But guys, what I'd like to do is I'd like to try to draw out for you why this is counterintuitive by sort of sharing with you a weird sort of visual representation. Please don't write this down. But guys, along the way, we're going to look at this conceptually, then we're going to look at it mathematically, both as a sum and as a fraction. Those are the two equations that I mentioned. But guys, what I'd like to do first is I'd like to represent this for you visually but guys, unfortunately, the only way for me to do this is to get out of the slide presentation because I can't manipulate objects that are slides. So guys, here's the idea. We have two samples of gas. One is red, one is blue. Now guys, looking at these two samples of gas, and then the middle is just an empty container. Guys, let me ask you a question right up front. How will the pressure of gas number two relate to the pressure of gas number one? This is a question that is completely within bounds for you. How will the pressure of two, blue, let's call them blue and red, how will the pressure of blue relate to the pressure of red? It'll be higher, but guys, the answer is not just higher. You can come up with it numerically. It will be double. Why double? because there's twice as many particles. But guys, this relies upon some fundamental assumptions. What has to be the same about these samples for that doubling to in fact be the case? Same temperature and same volume. And guys, if the temperatures are the same and if the volumes are the same, what mathematical expression can we use to figure out that their pressures will be double? The pressure of blue will be double. What equation represents that? 
PivNERT. Yep, because guys, what we can do is we can look at this and we could PivNERT this. Hey, thank you. And we can PivNERT this. And guys, R is obviously a constant. T is the same. Volume is the same. And what we find out then is that the pressure is proportional to moles. This is going to be really important later, so I thought I'd introduce it now. So the idea, guys, is that if we have twice the particles, which is N, we will therefore have twice the pressure P. Does that make sense? OK. Now, guys, let's just assign some random numbers to this. And let's call this one atmosphere of pressure. And as a result, this will therefore be two atmospheres of pressure. Does that sit OK? OK. So guys, let's do this then. Let's take this sample of gas. Oh, it's going to let me do it with my pen. And let's slide it in there. What is now the pressure in that center container? One atmosphere. Now guys, let's do this. Uh-oh. Let's pull this out. This is a lot easier with a mouse. So guys, let's pull this out. We'll move this back where it came from. And now guys, let me do this. Let me put, oh, I may even go 3D. Let's put a metal block, huh? Let's put a metal block inside that container. And now let's slide this into the container. What is the pressure inside that container now? Is it one atmosphere? I'm hearing votes for greater than one atmosphere. Why would it be greater than one atmosphere? There's not as much volume. And so guys, the idea here is we can see this through PivNERT. Guys, please don't ever use equations to describe phenomenon. But we can look at it, and we can say if the volume goes down, what happens to the pressure in order to keep this equal? Well, the pressure's got to go up if these things are not changing. The number of moles isn't changing. The temperature wasn't changing. So if the volume goes down, the pressure's got to go up. Or you could simply look at it, and you could say that you're now functionally squeezing a gas into a smaller space. Boyle's law says the pressure will go up. Does that jive? You OK with the idea? OK. So now, guys, let me clean up my mess, and let's come back to this. So we understand, OK, so now that the block is gone, what's the pressure inside the container? One atmosphere. So now let's pull this out. And now, guys, let's put our blue gas in. What is now the pressure inside that container? Two atmospheres. What is now the pressure of the red gas? One atmosphere. Now let's put the red gas in. Now what is the pressure of the red gas? Do you see how that's different than it would be if it were a liquid or a solid? Guys, we showed an example just a moment ago when we put red gas inside a container that already had something in it, a solid. And when that happened, the pressure went up. But we just put red gas into a container that had something else in it, another gas, and you're now saying the pressure doesn't go up. And it doesn't. Even though blue gas was already in there in the same way that that block was in there, it behaves differently. Blue gas and red gas don't even know the other gas is there. They behave as if the other one is not present, unlike red gas with a block, because the block decreased the volume and blue gas doesn't. Do you see the distinction? So guys, here then comes the question. What is the total pressure inside of the container? What's the pressure of red gas? One. Let me separate them again. So guys, the idea is this. The pressure of, come on, come, oh, that didn't work. There we go. Pressure of red gas is what? One. Pressure of blue gas is two. When we mix them together, the one does not know that the other is there. But guys, what is then the pressure of the entire system? three atmospheres. So we do have an additive effect for pressure. So guys, maybe the question is why? 
why does the pressure become the sum of the two? How can we talk about that conceptually and mathematically? What is the... Go ahead. Good, so let's talk about that. So pressure... Pressure is force over an area, right? Force is being caused by collisions. The area is the surface area of the container. Keep going. Absolutely. Guys, do you understand that conceptually? It's critical you understand this. And to my memory, this is the first time we formally talked about that. Why is it that more gas creates greater pressure? And it's all about collisions. You have more particles running into the same area. As a result, a greater force creates a greater pressure. Does that sit okay? But guys, what about this? What mathematical expression represents this? What mathematical expression tells us that the pressure is going to go up when we mix them together? We don't even need to go there yet. Guys, this is still Pivner. Remember what we did when we had these separated, and I think I can, oh, maybe I can't. Let me do this. When we had these separated, and I'm just going to go ahead and separate them out and then go back to my slideshow. Wait. No! Time to do a lot of undoing. <laughs> that could have been a disaster. All right, so guys, when we go back to this, let me see what happens if I do this. Hey, there we go. So guys, the idea is this. We could find the pressure in this container using Pivner. We could find the pressure in this container using Pivner. When we mix them together, we could also find the pressure in the mixture. And let me go ahead and create the mixture. Guys, we can also find the pressure in the mixture using Pivner. So what changes in Pivner now that we mix them together? Which of these variables change? N. So what we've done is we've increased N. Because we haven't changed volume, that functionally increases the pressure. So, and we can do the math because it's simply if one had a pressure of one and if one had a pressure of two, when we mix them together, the pressure becomes three. Yeah? Then, guys, this brings up the idea of partial pressure. So the total pressure would be three, but the pressure of red gas is still one and the pressure of blue gas is still two. You get the idea? Okay. So guys, all of that then together is summarized. Let me see if I can pull this apart. All of that then is summarized using this equation. It goes like this. It's in your AP equation sheet. Grab it if you want. But it looks like this. And again, guys, and I know I keep belaboring this, and some of you are going like, okay, we get it, gases are hard. Because there's only so much I can do. This is frankly one of my least favorite things to teach. Because I know how hard they're going to make this on the AP test, and I don't know how to stress for you enough how weird this gets until you actually get into the middle of weird. So I feel like I'm trying to draw something out of you that just isn't innately there. Because you look at something simple like PT is A plus B plus C, and you're like, yeah, duh, I get that. But guys, the implications of this get a little wacky. You'll see in homework, you'll see as we review for the AP test. Um, but again, guys, all I can simply say is don't, don't, don't remove yourself from this, engage with it, because it does get weird. So all this says, guys, and this is the mathematical representation of Dalton's partial law, uh, law of partial pressures, simply said the total pressure of a mixture of gases is equal to the sum of the partial pressures of the gases that make it up. So guys, we've got this idea that this is a sum, and we're simply going to add these together. Is that okay? Okay, so now guys, what we're gonna do is we're going to start mucking around with this equation. And I don't know that you necessarily need to do this, but here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take Pivnert. We're gonna take Pivnert and we're gonna solve it for pressure. So when we do that, we end up with what I like to call Nertva. 
okay? So pressure is equal to nerva. And then what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to take all of these pressures and we are going to plug in nerva for pressure. And guys, when we do that, we end up with this expression. Take a second and drink it in. So guys, what I did is I simply took Dalton's Law of Partial Pressure Equation, remember A's and B's and C's, and what I did is I took Pivner, solved it for pressure, and then I plugged in NERTVA for, um, for, each of these, for each of these factors. You okay with that? Okay, so guys, whether you wrote this down or not, what we need to now do is we need to start mucking around with this equation. So, imagine that we are using this equation to describe a mixture of gases, because that's what it does, right? So guys, if we have a mixture of gases in the same container, which of these variables cancels out because it's the same in all of the different components of the equation? So first of all, volume. If it's in the same container, the volume goes in all, in all examples. What else? Temperature? Temperature will be the same in all, in all cases. Anything else? Well, R is a constant. And guys, this leads us to a very, very interesting idea that we talked about conceptually, but now we need to dig into mathematically. When we do this math, what's the only thing that's left? Moles. And so, guys, what we find out is that there is a very, very real connection between the moles of gas that is present in a mixture and the pressure of that gas in the mixture. So, guys, in order to highlight this, I don't think I made this my next slide. I think I'm going to have to go back. But, guys, in order to highlight this idea, let's go back and then we can move forward. So I'm going to clean this up. I'm going to grab a hold of this, and then we're going to go back up here. <clears throat> so guys, where in this diagram is that relationship represented? So we've got this idea that pressure total is equal, and we'll just do A and B, is equal to the relationship between numbers of moles. So guys, we talked about the idea that this is one atmosphere of pressure, and therefore this was two, right? But what in this diagram, what in this picture represents numbers of moles? The number of dots. And guys, obviously this isn't five moles and 10 moles, but proportionally, here's what we know that if this is some amount of moles, how many moles is that? Twice as many. So let's call this one mole, and if that's one mole, then this is two moles. And guys, those relationships always hold true in both directions. So if we know a ratio or a relationship between moles and a mixture, then we know a pressure relationship in that mixture as well. And conversely, if we know a pressure relationship, we know a moles relationship because guys coming back to that original equation we mucked around with, there's a direct relationship between how many moles exist in a mixture and the pressure that component of the mixture exerts. Do you get the idea? Does that sit okay? So guys, that then is actually what this equation is all about is simply the idea that when we have mixtures of gases, and you may want to write this down, the pressure that a gas contributes to a mixture is proportional to the number of moles that it contributes to the mixture.
How does that sit for you? Is that okay? So guys, up until now, what we've done is we've looked at this idea through the, eye, the lens of, of Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures and this idea that they're additive, that we can sum them together. But what we've done now is we've talked about the idea that there's also relationships that exist between partial pressures and moles. And so what we're going to do is we're going to dig deeper into this proportionality idea. And we're actually going to focus now on a mixture and one component of that mixture. So instead of talking about, hey, here's a mixture and here's all the different components, we're going to talk about total pressure and then the pressure of one of the components and talk about relationships that exist there. And then guys, we're actually done for the day and you'll have some time to get your homework done. So you ready to sort of take these ideas and change the angle that we're looking at it a little bit? And guys, when we do, it looks like this. I, be judicious in what you write down. Um, but here, here's the fundamentals. Guys, because each gas in a mixture behaves independently, we can actually find a relationship between the amount of gas that's present for any component and its partial pressure. And guys, in order to do this, again, we take Pivner and we solve it for pressure. And when we do, we're going to talk about ratios. And guys, this part may be worth writing down. For a mixture of gases, the ratio of pressures is equal to the ratio of moles. We've already established earlier that there's a connection between moles and pressure. But now guys, we're gonna look at this in terms of a ratio. And it goes like this. So we've got some mixture of gases and that mixture of gases has a total pressure, P sub T. And then we're just going to focus in on one portion of this, which is A. But then guys, what we're going to do is we are going to insert NERTVA for pressures. And guys, when we do this, we've already established this idea. The R's and the T's and the V's all cancel because those are the same for both sample because they're mixed together in the same vessel. And now guys, we're left with this. <clears throat> Again, the only thing standing is the numbers of moles. So guys, here's what I want you to do. Go back up. If you drew those circles with the gas particles in it, go back up there. Or if you didn't, we can go back up there together. So guys, where in this where in this thing is this relationship represented? Go ahead. Okay, so keep going. Okay. So let's give it a number, go ahead. Okay, so we'll call this one atmosphere. Okay, perfect. Okay. Okay, so let's try to plug these in. So where does one mole go? Which N? So that would be our NA. So say we're focusing on the red gas, right? Okay, so that would be our NA. And then where does the pressure go? PA. Is that okay?
But in order for this equation to hold true, remember it's got to be a mixture of gases. So now keep going. There we go. Okay, so this is then going to get us there. So two atmospheres. Keep going. Okay. Okay. So let, let me, and that's the place you got to be careful because actually no. And here's what we need to acknowledge. So if I go back here and escape out of this, let me mix these together because it's not one half and one half. Let me hit play again and now this is in the middle. So now we've got these things mixed together. So what does Dalton's law of partial pressures tell us? The pressure is now inside here. How many? Three atmospheres. And how many moles of gas do we have in there? Three moles. So it's not one half and one half, it's one third and one third. So what we're doing is we're looking at total samples. So the idea is that our total pressure is three atmospheres. Our total number of moles is three moles. And then for our red gas, it's one and one. Does that make sense? Do you see how that works? But exactly, it would be two thirds and two thirds. But then the question becomes, what does this allow us to do? And what this actually allows us to do is this. Um, let me give you some different information. And it's going to be simple, but watch. So imagine that we know that the pressure is three atmospheres. And we want to know the pressure of the red gas. Guys, you can figure that out. Given what you've got in front of you, and you're going to see questions like this in multiple choice on the AP test. They're going to throw at you. They realize the balls won't be red and blue because it's not in color. They'll have a way to distinguish between the different colors of balls. Um, but guys, understand this question would be totally fair game on the AP test. What's the pressure of the red? One atmosphere. How do we come up with that? Well, guys, logically, the idea is this. We know the total pressure of the system, but we also understand that there's a pressure mole relationship. So if we can figure out what fraction of the molecules is red gas, we can therefore figure out what fraction of the pressure is red gas. And so, guys, at that point, we just need to start counting molecules. How many total molecules are there? 15. So, fifth, and so let me scratch down the equation for reference. So, PA over P total is NA over N total. So, representatively, we know that there's 15 total molecules. How many of them are red? Five. Now, we know the total pressure is three atmospheres. We want to know the pressure of the red guys. So whether you do this mathematically or conceptually, if a third of the molecules are red, a third of the pressure will be from red, and a third of three is one. Or if you want to do the math, this is 15x is equal to 15, or x is equal to one. So if the numbers are nasty, you can always do the math you know, longhand, or if it's easier, and typically in multiple choice, it's easier. Um, even if there are numbers, there are numbers that work out whole, um, although you will get your calculator on the multiple choice section. Um, that's the logic behind the question. And that's the power of this relationship, is if we can figure out mole relationships, we can get pressure relationships from mixtures. Is that okay? Okay, so guys, that then leads us to this final idea that we're working on, and I need to figure out where on earth I am in my slides. Ah, uh, I'm trapped. <laughs> Holy smokes, where'd it go? Um, let's do this. There we go. Okay, so guys, we're back to this. And this then is where we head with this in order to wrap this up. So we've got this equation. We know the ends are proportional. But guys, what we can do is this. Don't write this down. But now we've got the same equation we solved, right? That if 
fifteenths is red, then one third of the pressure is red, five fifteenths, you get the idea. But guys, what we do with this to simplify it is we actually do this and we replace N over Na over N total with something called X. And X is what is referred to as a mole fraction, which makes sense. It's a fraction by moles. What fraction of the total number of moles is coming from any component gas? And when we replace that with X, we can then rejiggerify this equation and solving for PA, we get this. Find it in your equation sheet. Do you see it there? So guys, let me use this equation then to do for you more efficiently what we just did a second ago. So guys, it goes like this. PA is equal to P total times X. Actually, let me write it over here so we can go down. PA is equal to P total times X. So guys, let's use this to figure out the pressure of the red stuff. So we want to know the pressure of the red gas using our numbers from before. What is the total pressure inside the container? Three atmospheres. Then guys, we need to know the mole fraction. I don't, do you notice how it's different the way they did this on the AP, to, on the AP sheet? This is the only place where they define one of the variables in the equation rather than in the other column. Do you see what I'm saying? Normally, it would simply be X is equal to NA over N total or however they wrote it, but it would be in the other column. For some reason here, they defined it with the equation. But in either case, X is the number of moles of your component divided by total moles. And for us, is it okay if I just say five over 15? because the number of spheres is representative of a mole relationship. So it would be a third, and a third of three is one atmosphere. So guys, functionally, this equation just allows us to do this more effectively. Do you get the idea? Okay, so guys, that's where we needed to get today. You now have about 20 minutes to work on your homework. Um, let me throw that up on the wall. Guys, let me just warn you, we're getting dangerously close to the next unit test. We have one or maybe two more days of content. And then guys, we're done with gases and we're ready to uh, get into the test for this unit. So guys, with that said, your homework is relatively short. We're gonna spend the next 20 minutes working on this. Then we're going to gather together. We're going to wrap up loose ends with the labs that you uh, have due today. And then guys, we are going to pre-lab our next lab and we will go into lab on Thursday. So guys, next 20 minutes are yours. And then we'll go from there.